Hello, and welcome to BreezyCast. They have a special treat for you. We have Beyond All Reason, and this is actually the Pro 3v3 Tournament uh, Finals. Uh, so the teams are Team Barcode versus Team T Time Zone Nightmare. <laughs> I love that name. And uh, it's a best of five on the map, Tabula Remake. So let's introduce our players. First off, we have Malady. Apparently, this guy is a. Uh, I did watch some of the tournament, and uh, Malady here, he was making some pretty big plays. Uh, apparently, he's a very strong air player, and he is playing blue as Armada, getting one of these uh, reclaim bots out real fast to get those trees. Um, which do give you energy. Here we have Trash Panda in the light blue. Uh, I believe he is a uh, Age of Empires 4 Pro, and he's come to Beyond a Reason, and he's made it into the finals. Pretty stacked team so far. And then on the bottom we have in the green Ragna, a very aggressive player, does pretty unorthodox builds. Um, I uh, love watching Ragna. He's one of my favorite players to watch. And then for Team Time Zone Nightmare, we have Teddy. Uh, I believe he was one of the finalists for the last 1v1 tournament. And uh, in the red, we have uh, Sabutai. If you've watched any of my casts on the channel, uh, he was uh, he was in one of them. I think it was a 1v1 versus Shocks. Great player. And here on the top... In the yellow, playing as Armada, is Clyred. I believe he's the number one ranked uh, team game player in bar right now. So, we have the elite of the elite here, pretty much, uh, in the finals. And it seems like people are actually fav favoring Armada now. Uh, for Armada to Co uh, Cortex. So, that's interesting to me, because we're... Seems like everybody favored Cortex, so um, maybe some balance changes since I've last casted. We got some uh, scout on scout action. Looks like Trash Panda gonna put the moves on though, do a little juke maneuver, and uh, just continues on. Looks like we got a little bit of grunt on grunt action here. Ragna and Teddy battling it out. Looks like Teddy will come on top in that exchange. Nice little micro new. He pulls the, the low health one back so the, the higher health one can go forward. Oh, and these grunts can actually go up this hill. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so this this right here is actually raidable with K-Bots. I like what Ragna's doing here. He's kind of walling this off, so uh, no sneaky run bias for Teddy here. Crash Panda sending Ragna a construction vehicle. wonder why he did that. I don't know. Maybe they have some kind of plan with that. Not really sure. Uh, oh, looks like Clyret's trying to do a run by, but it gets denied by this uh, sentry here. So for anybody that's new to Beyond All Reason, uh, this game is actually based off uh, an older game called Total Annihilation. Um, but they've created their own version of it and it's completely blown up. Um, and let's see here. So there's two resources in, in Beyond All Reason. There's energy and then there's metal. So you see these patches here. These, uh, this is metal, and you want to put these extractors on the metal patches to get that metal. And your economy ticks every second, so it's like a continuous income. Um, so like in StarCraft, you have to pay for your units up front, while in Beyond All Reason and Total Annihilation, um, you can build units without having to pay for them in full right away, like up front. 
if that makes sense. So it's a uh, quite a bit different economy than like most of the other RTS that are out there, like Age of Empires and Starcraft, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, so we're probably going to see a nice little line here in the center of laser towers. Um, just so it's nice to have some defenses in certain key areas so units can't just run by and get to the juicy income in the back, these wind generators, killing these extractors. Um, that's not what you want. Oh, so it looks like Malady, he's doing a little run by here with some pawns that are going up this hill. And I don't know, but uh, Clyret reacting quite well, building scouts because they build really fast. Um, so he's able to just kind of like flood those pawns away. Okay, so let's take it. We got some action here in the center. We have Ragna and Trash Panda kind of ganging up on uh, Sabutai a little bit here. 2v1. And Ragna's going into Shell Shockers, which is your light artillery. You use these to beat down these uh, laser towers. Um, because they do outrange them. And it looks like Trash Panda, he's going into Whistlers. Okay, that's interesting, because um, when I was playing Bar, uh, nobody would make Whistler trucks. So maybe they've gotten uh, a buff since I've played, which is cool to see, because in TA, uh, the, the missile trucks were used quite often in these kind of, uh, especially in team games, when there's less territory to control. And it's easier to choke up with uh, towers and stuff. Abusing that range of the missile. Okay, looks like Clyrod, he's going to go in for a big push. Um, looks like he wanted to go for a commander snipe, but Trash Panda on top of that. He's moved his commander away. Yeah, now Sabotai, he kind of has to deal with all these by himself. Um, Teddy, he's got some Rocketeers on the side, uh, which is your missile bot. Also, good counter for these uh, towers. Pushes these towers and the commander away as they outrange both of those. Get the ping at the top. So it looks like Clyret, or actually Sabotai, is worried about this uh, group of pawns here. He doesn't want to get those behind his base. And Sabotai really low. It's a good thing he has this construction turret here. It's actually repairing his commander. Um, these Janus do a lot of damage. I believe like one missile will like take a fourth of your commander HP. So you have to be very careful with when uh, Janus are involved on the front line. Oh, looks like Sab he built a Twilight. So that actually... Um, what happens with the Twilight, it's it's a metal extractor, but it paralyzes units when it dies. So that's what you saw there. It looks like Sabotai, he's going for it. He's dive bombing onto the missile trucks, which aren't very good in close quarter combat. Um, but with two commanders here, oh man, yeah, that's rough. So where is Teddy? Okay, Teddy's up top, so he's, he's bombarding the stuff on the bottom with these mobile artillery, but I don't know, I feel like Sabotai, he's kind of just fighting 2v1 here. I feel like Teddy should at least have his commander down here helping. He looks like Clyrod, he's trying to inch forward. Try my best not to move the screen too much. You can guys see all the action. I wonder if I can, maybe I can angle this better. Oh, baby, look at that. Now we can see a little bit more of what's going on on the whole field here. Okay, while well, these players are pushing forward, looking pretty good so far for Team Barcode, um, which is Malady, Ragna, and Trash Panda. Okay, Teddy looks like he wants to put in some pressure here on the south side, trying to draw Ragna's units back. Um, to s slow this push down in the center. A good move by Teddy here. 
cleared out some laser towers. Uh, oh, but Malady, he did a nice little run. So the, there's those pawns, and he finally got them in to do a nice run by. Oh, this is just awful for Sabotai. Poor Sabotai. Kind of getting bullied this match. Um, by all three of uh, Team Barcode. And the pawns, they're going to get to the construction turrets. Oh, man. So that is your stationary build power. And what build power does is uh, it basically just speeds up all of your all of your buildings. So uh, if you have a metal for it, you can make those construction turrets or construction units also have build power. So oh, it looks like Maldi he's coming in with shurikens. These are paralyzer drones. Um, so it looks like Teddy, oh, it looks like Teddy and Malady have swapped into air. Okay, this is a little scary for, oh, it looks like Clarit, he's going to go for a snipe on Ragna's commander. Oh, and it looks like he should be able to get it. Oh, oh and he does get it, and it blows up a lot of his own units. Pretty good snipe there from uh, Team TZN. And all their commanders are low. Clyrit's Clyrit's pretty low here and he's getting pressured. And uh, Sabotai also kind of low. He's about half HP. But see, they kind of use all their units for that snipe, so now they don't really have much left over. And Trash Panda is taking advantage of that. He's pushing forward. We just kind of have like a constant air fight here. Okay, so it looks like Malady, he's bringing in the Paralyzer drones. Um, and these, they basically just stun units so other units can finish them off without taking any damage. So they're very efficient units. Uh, from what I saw in the tournament, um, it's probably the strong, it's, it's so strong, those shurikens. Because if they don't have any anti-air, they just fly in, stun everything, and then you send your units in and it just, uh, your units don't take any damage. You basically just kill uh, an army for, for free. And since they're so mobile because they're air, you can kind of just help basically all of your teammates out pretty quickly. So using the, the power of air, the mobility of it. Okay, Teddy looks like he's just trying to bomb some extractors. He does take that one out, I believe. Uh, Malady ecoing up like crazy. And yeah, it's still pumping out air. Just gonna you know, take a look at the bases and see if anybody's transitioning into uh, tier two. What the plans of the players are. Oh, it looks like Teddy's going in for some D guns. Uh, can you see he's he got seven kills with that? So yeah, finally putting some pressure on Ragna. So now now Trash Panda is kind of having to fight um, both players, Clyrit and Sabutai. But this that also leaves Malady free to do whatever he wants, basically, since uh, Trash Panda's kind of taken on two opponents at one time. So I feel like this is going to scale a lot better for Team Barcode in the long run. As long as uh, Trash Panda can kind of hold the line versus uh, TZN. Yeah, so with these artillery in the mix, you kind of have to constantly micro your units. Otherwise, you're just going to be taking free damage. So that's why you see them moving their units back and forth. Oh, looks like we have a shuriken attack. Surprise, mother truckers. 
And see, this this is the power of the shurikens. They fly in, stun stun a good chunk of the of Clyrat's army, and it just kind of just dies for free. And then they can kind of just pull back. So you get to take very efficient trades. It's honestly Team Barcode. I feel like they have a better overall team composition of units. Maldi saying, make T2, I reclaim and push. Let's just take a zoom out here. And now Ragna is kind of putting pressure onto Teddy. Kind of just keeping Teddy at bay while Trash Panda gets the push forward here. And actually, Malady, he transported a construction turret to the front lines to reclaim the wreckage. Okay, that's the first time I've seen that. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but Clyrat's gonna take that out. But he did get, he got a lot of metal before that died. And he's also transporting construction turrets over to Ragna. And it looks like Ragna's gonna switch into advanced vehicles. Um, a good timing for it. Seems like Trash Panda has enough units to kind of cover them for now. So this transition can be pretty, uh, should be pretty safe. But it does give Tizan opportunity to get some of this wreckage, this metal, and um, claim back some territory. Uh, let's see if they have any T2 on their mind right now. I just want to take a look at the bases. I never really get a chance to look. just want to make sure I capture everything for you guys and don't miss uh, anything. Hey, that... Crash Panda's uh, vehicle factory is idle. So yeah, this this transition into advanced vehicle is probably going to catch uh, TZN off guard. And it looks like he's building those bulls, which is your heavy assault tank for T2. And once he gets a couple of these out, you'll probably start seeing uh, Team Barcode put on some pressure again. Because you definitely want to use uh, your advantage of T2 right away. Oh, but wait. So Clyred, he's actually shifted from the, from the center and he's going to go push into Malady's base here. See here, those pesky paralyzer drones. The shurikens are slowing this attack down. Malady bringing his commander forward, uh, looking for some D guns. He's cloaked up. Going to try to D gun all of Clyrette's army here, and he's going to go for a self destruct. So he's going to try to blow all these units up. And uh, unfortunately, okay, so he tried to retreat, but he didn't cancel the self destruct. So he ended up blowing up anyways. Um, so it looks like Maudie, he did a little, little bit of a error misclick. But now this gives Clyrite a f free reign to just push on in. There's nothing to stop this. Um, Trash Panda trying to send his units up to help his teammate. Um, actually, this is, this is a pretty scary push here from Clyrite. Um, it's a good thing Malady's economy is pretty spread out all over the place, so uh, it's going to be hard to really kill a lot of it. And now that these Paralyzer drones are here, um, that's going to really slow down Clyrette pushing in here. And this is a lot of metal being left over. Oh, I don't know if this was... I mean, he did do a lot of economic damage. He took out a lot of wind generators, but... I don't know. That's a lot of metal left behind. Each of these tanks are like 135 metal. That is... That's probably enough metal there to go advanced. Oh, and the missile truck's putting in work. Pushing away the stouts. And Ragna... Oh my god, he's got a big army of bulls now. 
And so Clyret and Sabutai kind of have to uh, work together to fight this off here. Looks like Sabutai, he's trying to get a Twilight up. He was trying to see, he's trying to catch uh, his units with that Paralyze there so he could capitalize and uh, kill some units there for free. But unfortunately, uh, Ragna keeping his distance. Okay, so Teddy, he's switching into Advanced Fecal, so he's he's kind of evened out the tech a little bit. Um, I believe I saw earlier Ragna sharing a con with Malady and Trash, so they, they should have Advanced Economy rolling with that. Good team play there. Yeah, and Trash Panda, he's got Hounds out now. So he's on T2. And Clyret, he's going to go in for some D-guns. Oh, but doesn't quite get the juice there. Almost just slightly out of range. If he would have got all those units, that would have been quite nice. I don't know. It's looking pretty scary. Looks like Sabatai, he's built some mines here. So this could be a way to... Uh... Yeah, see how Sabatai, he's trying to bait them in. That's why he has his units kind of far back here at a distance. He wants them to push up. Oh, yeah, that's nice damage. Those mines actually did quite well. It took out a couple bulls. Um, but now they know for sure that there's mines there. I'm actually not sure how you clear mines in bar. Uh, I believe... I think you can use the Juno. And, uh... But I don't know if there's, like, other ways to, to clear it, if that's the only way. I guess you could try to, like, ground fire them. Sabotai eco up pretty well there. He's got advanced solars, and he's trying to convert energy into metal. Uh, Teddy's trying to eco up with T2 metal extractors. Clyret still on T1. Um, so, switching to Tier 2, it's quite expensive, so... Um, it's kind of hard to transition when you're already being pressured. Team Barco definitely has the advantage at the moment uh, in economy. They're basically double. And here comes... The, okay, so that's the Juno. So he's using that to clear out mines. Um, so yeah, it does kill quite a bit of those there. And now that they know that that area is clear, they're going to push through it. Nice team composition. They have Hounds, which are your mortars, mobile mortar uh, K-Bot. And they have Bulls for the front, front line uh, to absorb damage and deal damage. So good team composition from Barcode overall. Um, the problem is, is TZN is still on Tier 1 units. Good micro from Aragna and Trash Panda. And here come the Paralyzer drones to uh, really turn the tide of this battle here. Oh, all these units are going to get paralyzed. Well, it looks like... Okay, Clyrod, he's got missile trucks, which uh, shoot down those Paralyzer drones. So that's good. He's got some anti-air with his army now. But... Ragna is reclaiming like a fiend. He's, he's sucking up all the metal that he's getting from this push. Teddy trying to cut off the reinforcement lines with his uh, Tzar. That's one beefy tank. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. This is getting pretty scary for TZN. Uh, they're oh, and he gets all the metal makers. Will they have enough to hold? I don't know. That's a lot of bulls. And Trash Panda doing a good job staying at range with these hounds. And yeah, Sabotai, he's in big time trouble here. He's going to lose everything. This might be the beginning of the end here for TZN. 
I don't know how how do they recover from this? Yeah, Sabotai has no production left to uh, build units. Let's see what Teddy's up to. He's got his units here, but oh, he's gonna lose so much energy back here. He's trying to get some shurikens up to paralyze these units, slow them down so he can get his units over there. But uh, I don't think it's enough. Because they this bar right here, you see the little bar under the health? Um, so yeah, that bar has to hit 100% before the unit actually gets paralyzed. So you do need quite a bit of those shurikens for the units to get paralyzed pretty much instantly. Teddy went going for the advanced geothermal. But, oh, that's a lot of shurikens here. Yeah, this is all just team barcode. It looks like Malady spamming scouts. It's a good combination, scouts and um, paralyzer drones. Because they're super cheap, you can spam them really fast. You can accumulate a high number of these real quick and then use the paralyzer drones to stun and then use the scouts to finish the units off. Okay, Ragna pushing in with his bulls. And it looks like, yeah, they're all coming down for Teddy. Oh no, here come the hounds. That is a lot of T2 units. See, Clyrod, he's trying to fight back in the center. He's trying to switch into advanced vehicle now, but it's it's uh, it's just too late. But he's trying to just transition any way he can. Yeah, so that that tech switch from Team Barcode really paid off um, because TZN wasn't able to capitalize on them switching. Because um, it is a lot of metal to switch into T2, so usually you can get some kind of advantage when they do that, but uh, they were pretty far ahead, so like when you're ahead, you get further ahead. Um, and T2 is a good way to solidify your win, as you just have better units to kind of finish off the game. And yeah, looks like TZN is going to resign. So GG, well played to Team Barcode on game one. Um, this is a best of five, so uh, I will be casting this whole final series. So stay tuned for that if you guys enjoyed the game. Looks like Ragna doing everything. Although I think Malady's airplay, um, being able to... Uh, just the use of those shurikens, man. Just being able to kind of help either team it out really fast... Um, paralyzing all the units and then they push in. Very good coordination. Oh, it looks like looks like Maudi was actually building a nuke. Um, so we'll see if uh, TZN can take a game in game two. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya. Take care.